morning from us at Adobe Live. I am here with Christine and Aaron from Farm Design. Hey everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You came back. Yes. You came back. Had to. Yeah. Yes. You had to. Where would we go? That's true. <laughs> Very true. Maybe go eat some delicious food. We've got some awesome people in chat. We've got Yuri and Kevin and Leslie, Brindacity. Hello, hello. If you are new to Adobe Live, we are here weekly on Behance, be.net slash live. And this week we're focusing on graphic design, specifically branding and packaging design. So we're going to really dive into that today, especially the uh, exploration. Yeah. Yes, design exploration. But before we do that chat, I want to let you know that we are going to be doing a giveaway and we also have a challenge running during this stream. So in about 30 minutes, we'll be doing a giveaway for all of you who are active in chat. What's up, Esther? She says, hi, Kathleen and Farm. What's up, what's up? Hi, Esther. Uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway in about 30 minutes. So we will be giving away an awesome temporary tattoo pack. Oh, cool. Get the cool little <laughs> toolbar, some product mnemonics, really nice. nice. And also an Illustrator sticker and an Adobe Stock sticker. So you'll win all three of these, a little swag pack if you win the giveaway, so make sure you stick around in chat and you're logged in on Behance with your Adobe ID. If you don't have one, super easy to make one, totally free, highly recommend. Okay, mm -hmm. on to the next. We do have a challenge for you today. Every day we like to have a different theme. So this week, or today, if you go to the challenge tab that is over here in the chat pod, above it, click on challenge, you can read about what we're asking you to do. Uh, we're asking you to use Capture, which is a mobile app. It's free. It's awesome to create and apply a vector pattern to a business stationary system in Photoshop or InDesign. So if you download Capture, if you don't have it already, you can play around with the, the patterns. Send it over to your desktop apps and get those uploaded by 1230. So you have an hour and a half and you'll see a little timer in the bottom of the screen after the giveaway to let you know. Cool. Cool, so that's enough about me. For those of uh, you in chat who don't know who Farm Design is, maybe you can introduce yourself one more time. Yeah, so I'm Christine, um, Art Director at Farm Design. And I'm Aaron, I'm the Founder Creative Director at Farm Design, uh, a branding agency in Pasadena, just a little outside of Los Angeles. And we've been doing this sort of design and branding stuff since 2000. Wow. Yeah, and so, um, Christine has been with me for a little over five years now, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of what uh, our portfolio the, uh, is based on what we've been able to do in the last five years, along mm -hmm. with our team um, at Farm Design. Um, so we want to kind of just share and give you guys as much insight as possible on mm -hmm. sort of how we craft what we do and um, and be able to answer any questions you guys might have that. Uh, you know, I know when we were students, we were, and still, we have tons yeah. of questions like we just oh, yeah. want to learn. Yeah. Constantly evolving our portfolio, yeah. you know, just never stop learning. Yeah, totally. so I think these Adobe Live mm -hmm. events are great for just gathering information information, and, and learning and, mm -hmm. and the sharing of information. So mm -hmm. totally. uh, we, see, we have a board over here which we can see your guys' chats and mm -hmm. questions. So uh, we really encourage you guys to ask some tough questions because uh, We'll be very transparent, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll we'll share anything. So we don't we don't like to hide anything. Awesome. So ask some toughies. Yeah. <laughs> you have Bring carte it blanche. On. Do it. <laughs> um, cool. And so I guess throughout the day we're, we're gonna sort of continue from what we talked about yesterday. So we'll do a little recap of that in, in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, I, I I tasked the entire staff at Farm Design um, to do little sort of tips and little sort of nuggets of information that they would want to share mm -hmm. um, that they've learned through their their sort of career um, with you guys so uh, mm -hmm. periodically through the day we'll do like a little little tip mm -hmm. um, um, I think just little nuggets of wisdom um, that will help you guys sort of get inspired yeah. Some mindset mm -hmm. stuff um, uh, tactical stuff so mm -hmm. Uh, we'll do that throughout the day as well. Cool. So we heard from you, Erin, yesterday. We heard from Levi, one of your interns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see who else we hear from. And also before we get started, we are going to be hopefully jumping into Adobe Dimension at the end of the stream to show how this design exploration will appear on packaging. So mm -hmm. if you don't know what Dimension is, it is what was previously called Project Felix. It's a great way to mock up your assets on 3D 
products. So like the cans that you see behind us, you could mm -hmm. throw your mm -hmm. PNGs or your images on a rounded can. You can light it, put a background. It's super easy, very intuitive, and included in your Creative Cloud subscription. So stick around if you want to see how Dimension works. Cool. Cool. So let's maybe do a quick overview of what you did yesterday, like really quick, so that yeah, or yeah. even you can talk about yeah, maybe a little farm. segue into yes. before we get into uh, what we worked on yesterday. In case you missed it, yeah, is uh, Farm Design is a branding agency. We we like to develop and build brand systems for our clients, mm -hmm. um, large or small, uh, but really uh, those systems include various uh, levels beyond just a logo. Mm -hmm. We believe a brand has to exude a sort of an emotion, a brand essence, mm -hmm. and it allows uh, a, a brand, their product, their service to be able to connect with their customer. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we try to do is, is build these sort of artifacts um, that start to engage and communicate, start this dialogue. Mm -hmm. sort of with words and with visuals with their customer. Right. Um, so here I have our sort of Behance page open, uh, which we post all of our work. We obviously have a website, but we, we, we really love working with Behance um, to sort of share work. Mm -hmm. um, it allows us to get in touch with a lot of great creatives, and actually we get a lot of work through Behance as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So have you ever checked out the jobs board, or is it mostly they come to you on Behance? Yes. We, we've. Mm -hmm. uh, Use the jobs board. We've posted a few, um, like when we're looking for a designer. Oh, great. We'll do a post, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it posts for a month or three months, I can't recall. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we get a ton of sort of inquiries and resumes um, and a lot of great talent from all over the world sort of applying for jobs. So I, I think it's a really great resource. Totally. Um, to. Um, See what else is out there. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. how I got my internship at Adobe. Oh, oh really? Nice. On the Behance job boards. I'm like 95% sure that's true. It was a while ago, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. <laughs> okay, cool. So the job boards, they also come to you, and your projects are beautiful mm -hmm. on oh, Behance. Yeah, yeah. They are totally fleshed out, kind of a work of art themselves. Yeah, I, I, I think when when I started, I said we're. Uh, farm design started in 2000. It was it was me really working out of my home office, and then later I, I transitioned into my garage. So I worked out of my garage. <laughs> nice mm -hmm. step up, uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> just little little steps, but yeah. it's like a little bit of growth. Um, and really, where we are now, which I consider sort of farm 2.0, uh, started to happen about a little over five years ago, five or six years ago, mm -hmm. when we um, I, I got an office space in Pasadena, and then I started hiring people such mm -hmm. as Christine to come in mm -hmm. um, to sort of help grow the business. Okay. And so really pr everything in this portfolio is from Farm 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, cool, so you kind of took everything away and started fresh. In right, the right. Um, and I think we learned a lot um, working with other people. I, I yeah, used to so just, many things. yeah, when mm -hmm. I used to design, I would design um, something for a client and let's say mm -hmm. it was um, a, a coffee cup. Mm -hmm. And all I would do is I take that coffee cup mm -hmm. and I put it in my portfolio, and yep. that's all I would show. Like, mm -hmm. there's the coffee yeah, cup. Show I designed. don't tell, right? <laughs> that's it. I don't know. Right. But I think what, what's lacking when you do that is is really your, a brand and a product really is an extension of the company, and it's something that it, um, communicates to mm -hmm. the, the client or the customer. And I think it's something that has to tell some sort of story. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not I get um, something that I just to reiterate what I said yesterday. Um, you know, the brand is something that shouldn't just communicate visually. Like, yes, that's our main job, mm -hmm. but I think language and brand voice is a really big part of what branding is today. So yeah, so here's, so when we craft the portfolio pieces that you see on Behance or our website, we, we actually spend a lot of time and investment oh, in, cool. in time to sort of build out all the elements and try to tell that story besides just showing what we designed, um, giving it context sort of giving it sort of real space and um, real world experience as well as what the consumer might look like. Um, and so it really sort of starts to shape it for a potential client or someone viewing it. Uh, since we're talking about restaurants today, this is one that we did in uh, Marina Del Rey. It's a, it's a seafood restaurant, it's called Catch and Release. Uh, so we built all these sort of brand artifacts. Um, we really did this cool little ampersand Heck with like, yeah. a, like a fish hook yeah. in it. Hook? Cool. Yeah. Uh, we actually worked with the interior design team to do a lot of the, the what we call environmental graphics on the interior space. Oh. And so we did like the wall graphics, they had these pillars, so we took the opportunities to sort of make them look like um, and all the sort of the, on the 
up here, the dock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we put graphics on those. Nice. Um, we start creating brand voice. Mm -hmm. um, this yeah. is the, it's a chef-centric restaurant, and this is the, the chef here. Signage. Yeah, that blue and that red, that's a great combo. Yeah, yeah so I love that. building brand colors and mm -hmm. systems, uh, trying to create unique little artifacts. Um, the chef, uh, he said, I, I want you guys to create things that the customers would want to steal. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> that's oh, great. Really? Oh, okay. That's cool. So I'm Nail like, I'd want to steal those claws, you know, those <laughs> claw yeah. breakers. And so mm -hmm. we, 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 we found these, yeah. these sort of okay. claw breakers and then we put the logo on it. And even like this, mm -hmm. like contextual shots. Mm -hmm. So obviously we didn't cook this great booyah base of, yeah. right, and cook the bread. But, you know, it, it, it starts to frame the story of mm -hmm. what the restaurant is like and, the, and its uh, content. Building, again, brand voice. And those are things that we use on the bags. Here's a lot of sort of touch points that it would engage with consumers, mm -hmm. as well as sort of what is that brand voice. Uh, you know, slightly irreverent sort of attitude, and mm -hmm. so the, mm -hmm. the the copy should should represent that as well. So we have this these these coasters called cool. Shock Yeah. And, um, so we wanted it fun and light. Um, it's an ex an extension of the brand. So it kind of looks like this. So this is what we do. We build these systems, and if you notice, it's not just a singular logo that we slap on everything. No, the logo uh, slap. Yeah, we avoid <laughs> the logo slap, and we want to sort of build a lot of artifacts so that when we apply these to different touch points, mm -hmm. that it, it gives it uh, sort of some legs and mm -hmm. some depth to it. Um, but yet, we want to keep everything cohesive. Totally. Um, so we do websites, menus, um, did a lot of illustrations. Beautiful. Yeah, and we even have these little <laughs> these little floaties. floaties. Floaty keychains. Right? Very Again, cool. it's like, okay, would you want to steal that? Y you said it. So mm -hmm. yeah, so we create all these little things that people would want to keep. Yeah, that's great. And I'm just noticing how fluid the layout of this actual Behance project is. Is there a template that you use or what program do you use to lay this out? Um, we usually don't use a template, but I think our goal in laying out a portfolio piece is like kind of taking your consumer through an experience from yeah. like the front door to table seating, like mm -hmm. maybe you'll experience the menu and then as you're walking out, maybe you see the signage. Or, yeah. So I think when we put these together, that's always one thing we have in mind. Mm -hmm. And then to lay it out, we just use Photoshop and then we chop it up and then load it onto Behance. Very cool. I think that's, there's a lot of Behance projects out there that are, they tell a nice story, but just the way that they're laid out is almost distracting. Yeah. So this is a great inspiration. Yeah, we in spend mind. a, we mentioned it yesterday, we, we, we spend a lot of time just curating and crafting the actual portfolio pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we do photo shoots, sometimes we'll do 3D renders and mock-ups, but also when we're when we're curating it and trying to figure out what the sequence of images and artifacts are, mm -hmm. it's trying to balance out sort of macro and micro color contrast. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you put an image next to another image and they start to blend yeah. together. So you wanna make sure you sort of how everything starts to juxtapose with each other, that there's some nice mm -hmm. contrast right. and sort of flow. Mm -hmm. And so we do a lot of sort of pushing and pulling when we lay these things out. We don't just sort of assemble it and that's good. Mm -hmm. we're, we're constantly challenging, like, does it, does it feel right? Is it mm -hmm. telling the right story? And, and segmenting the story, so sometimes we'll, we'll transition from like what the food experience might look like and then you transition to what like the kitchen experience might look like. And mm -hmm. so there's different ways of sort of you want to block them, visually yeah. block mm -hmm. them in certain ways. Right, definitely telling a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do a lot of restaurants, they sort of look like that, and you can you can go to our Behance page to sort of get a sense of um, some of the work that we do. But leading up to that, and what we were starting to touch on yesterday, is mm -hmm. we build um, what we like right. to call brandscapes. Mm -hmm. Right, um, that was fun. <laughs> so I, I have a few brandscapes here, um, so this is sort of, now I'm sort of taking a step back from what we just experienced. Yeah. Um, this is one that we did recently um, uh, for a pool bar uh, cool. on the sixth floor of this uh, hotel in Palm Springs. So it's mm -hmm. this, they have light, light food, light bites, as I like to say, um, craft cocktails. Um, it's sort of like kind of a hip place to be, like when you're going to Coachella or just uh, hanging out for the weekend. Yep. Um, so it's called High Bar because um, it's uh, the, the sixth floor, the highest point in right. Palm Springs. <laughs> and so here's some logos. We start exploring some colors. Um, and then we, this is an example of a brandscape. So this isn't the actual design of anything that we did for them, 
but it, it's something that we present to the client to give them a sense of what it might look and feel like. And, I, and you, you can accomplish that through colors and textures and uh, you can start, and, and even like contextual shots. So we have a couple individuals here lounging by the pool. Mm -hmm. um, but you can start to see there's some interesting textures here that sort of make it fun and give it some sort of depth and opulence. Um, we have this texture here, which is inspired by sort of the tiling that you might find inside the pool. So yeah. there's these sort of elements that we can then get inspired from, draw from, and then apply them to the various touch points when we go to the design stage. Cool. So and sorry, if chat, if you want to see this in action, watch the replay from yesterday because Christine yeah. did some yeah. brand Yeah, I'll go through it like yeah. real Oh, quick. cool. We're going to do it. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So yesterday we were we were assembling mm -hmm. a lot of the artifacts and we were building um, brandscapes for uh, the restaurant that we'll do a recap of mm -hmm. shortly. Right. But it, it looks sort of like this. Uh, ultimately, this was the, the actual logo that they had picked. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was inspired by a lot of these sort of textures and colors here. But this this is sort of like first round presentation that yeah, the client sure. would see from, from farm design. Mm -hmm. So we like giving them like a, a spectrum to right. choose from. Um, probably we show like four to six. Something. Yeah, I think four this one is about four. So that kind of gets us up to speed on, we build these brandscapes, right. mm -hmm. the client normally picks a brandscape, and then we dial it in, and then we start uh, applying those to the various touch points. So that's sort of where we are today on day two, mm -hmm. is we, we're pretty close on where we are with our brandscape. Um, and so Christine can go over yeah, a little can... recap of that project and where we are and then moving forward. Yeah, oh. so I can pull that down. So if you guys weren't here yesterday, we were covering um, a restaurant called the Walkie Talkie and it's Urban Yakitori. Um, so it started off by two Los Angeles native chefs, they were siblings, and they're really passionate about creating simple food with great flavor. Um, they were brought up in a traditional home and they really were inspired by um, the home cooked meals and food that their parents um, made for them. And now they're bringing Walkie Talkie to LA's Grand Central Market. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Grand Central Market, it's a food hall. And yesterday we were kind of discussing how it's an emerging trend right now. And that, you know, it's um, a collection of like restaurants or food boutiques, a place where um, you can get um, food made by local artisans. Um, but the whole thing about this walkie talkie place is that you're able to customize it and, you know, use different seasonings and sauces. Um, and then we went through, you know, the demographic, 23 to 40. We mentioned foodies yesterday. Yes. Um, so those are the people who are kind of always wanting to experience something new when it comes to food. They got uh, their pulse on everything that's happening. Um, they're really knowledgeable of, you know, the chefs, their cooking styles, and sometimes the origin of their food. Um, how will they find out? So this is like a snapshot of what a food hall may look like. Right. Are any of these the actual Grand Central or um, Grand The Station? one on the top left okay. is Grand Central Market. Grand Central Market. Maybe, <laughs> that station. Those are New York, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, you see these really pop up. Um, uh, in a lot of metropolitan areas now. Um, mm -hmm. And so we actually have new clients that who are building food halls that we're helping brand the actual oh, food hall. Yeah. yeah. And then they have cool. all these different sort of vendors. <laughs> and <back>. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Really cool. Yeah. And, um, and the last one is why should they care? You know, it's going to be a unique experience. They're taking something traditional and making it more contemporary. Um, they're unique flavor combinations. And... The prep time is relatively easy, so it's something that you can get really quick. Um, so yeah, that was the recap of yesterday's brief. So, you know, those are the four questions we always like to answer when we kind of start a brief or research. It's the who are you, the who needs to know, how will they find out, and why should they care? Hmm. So those are always like kind of four questions we like to answer all the yeah. time and start with. It's a good base. Gotcha. You kind of keep it in mind yeah. while you're designing. Mm -hmm. Cool. So maybe we can answer a question real yeah. quick in between. Liam wants to know, when you're hiring, what do you look for? A resume or a portfolio? Which one's more important? That's, that's a really good question, Liam. Um, I think a lot of students that I get, they, they, they feel like they, they go to school, they spend, you know, their four years perfecting their craft and learning the skills, 
and they, they think that at the end of the rainbow, they have a portfolio, and they take it to a prospective um, uh, studio, and there's going to be a job waiting for them. Right. Welcome. And, yes. And, I, <laughs> and that's what I thought. It's like, you know, I, I can't wait. They're just waiting for me. But yeah. the, the, the thing is, there's a lot of competition out there. Not only are there other students that are graduating that are looking for work, there are also other professionals already in the field who mm -hmm. have experience also vying for those same jobs. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do we look for? Um, I, I think there's different categories um, in terms of experience. So I know when, you, when you're right out of school or you have you know, one to three years experience, I, I'm actually looking for something very different than if I, if I notice someone is a little more seasoned who has, mm. you know, three to seven years experience or greater. I think the, the people, what I'm looking for f from students or designers with very little experience is potential. Right. And mm -hmm. so it, it's not about like your portfolio has to be super dialed and I need to see that you work with these huge big brands. It has nothing to do with that. I just need to know what your skill level is. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I want to get to know the individual and I want to sort of understand um, if they're a team player, um, if they um, are ambitious and they, they're willing to grow and willing to take criticism, mm -hmm. which yeah. is really important in allowing um, the other individuals in the office to sort of mm -hmm. be able to critique their work and them not taking it personally. And totally. I think that's mm -hmm. how you grow, is being able to say, you can't always say it looks great. No. no that's no. what my mom does. My mom will say, oh, it looks great. Mine too, but right? I think it's because she doesn't know what it is. Right? And then you're like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but you need those You need those constructive criticism yeah. where people can say, yeah, you know, it, it's not very good, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do, and that's how people grow. So to answer Liam's question, I think when you're right out of school, resume is the first thing I look at. But I don't look at a resume for like where did you go to school and how much of experience you have. Mm -hmm. I look at resumes as, did they lay it out properly? Yeah, it's Are there a any test. typos? <laughs> How's the tracking and letting? Mm -hmm. Do they have nice contrast and fonts? Because if it's a really poorly designed resume, I'm not even gonna spend the time to even look at your portfolio, mm -hmm. a PDF or your website, because it's probably an indication of your you know, how much care that you put into mm -hmm. every little detail. Mm -hmm. So the resume is that start. I, I have limited time, so I'm always getting very, a lot of emails on inquiries like, do you have any job openings, mm -hmm. do you have any internships? And I don't have time to field and look at everything. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the resume. Wow. That's the hard thing about being mm -hmm. a, pers or a possible designer. It's like yeah. you can't just have a <laughs> Word document resume. Yeah. I think it yeah, starts with type. Like, yeah. I think type is like a foundation that right. every designer should be good at. Because if the resume is sort of, you know, just haphazardly put together and we just sort of like a second thought, mm -hmm. then what it tells the, uh, the studio or the agency or the creative director viewing it, it, it says that you probably might do something similar to when you're working with one of my clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to be very focused and think about the details when working on a particular project. And every little thing that you present to me is an mm -hmm. example of who you are and your level of detail. So it starts with the resume. Mm. Does that answer your yeah. question, Liam? <laughs> he says, incredible answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cool. So what did your resume look like? Can I give a resume? You know, I, I actually... <laughs> <laughs> I was like... I met him through, like, a, like it was, like, networking. Gotcha. Yeah, so it was more right. through he saw, I guess, the work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So, right. oh, you made me do, like, a brochure or, like, a book layout, like, editorial. Gotcha. So that was... Yeah. That was the resume. That was that was my resume. She never needed a resume because I hired her. I plucked her right out of school, <laughs> so I don't know if she had a resume. <laughs> right. <laughs> doesn't count. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we have the brief. Mm -hmm. And so from the brief, then we start to take this information and we start building a brandscape. Mm -hmm. And so uh, yesterday, Christine, she had compiled a bunch of sort of artifacts um, to help us build these brandscapes. Can you show some of what yeah. we started working on? Awesome. We, we really sort of kind of uh, explored one area with slight iterations because we're limited for time. But when we're in uh, our office, we're, we're oftentimes doing anywhere from six to 12 different brandscapes mm -hmm. to sort of see what's working and not working. And then we normally edit that down to about 
six to sort of then continue to flush out. So we're going to take one of these today and we're going to flush it out even further. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so yesterday, you know, I kind of started off with one. And um, if you guys watched the previous one, you know, when we create these brandscapes, um, we pull a lot of, you know, color inspiration, textures, um, perhaps an illustration style that you like, um, some photography, and maybe like a type style. And then we put them together and, you know, we create what we call um, a brandscape, which kind of gives off a little of the essence or feel of what um, the brand might start to look like. So here we kind of made some iterations, you know, just swapping out the logo, swapping out some color. So this was more on the palette, mm -hmm. starting to swap out a couple of things. So I never delete anything. I just like to make iterations just so we have something to compare and contrast. Smart. And then you can kind of see like which one works better, which one isn't working. So but I think these the, are like quick little moves. Yeah, too. these are what we call sprints. Mm -hmm. Like we'd like to do these things in 30 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to do that and trying to get into a space that starts to look and feel right, we, we don't design everything out of the gate because it takes too much time. Mm -hmm. So we want to just um, curate and, and grab sort of artifacts, found artifacts that we find online through Pinterest or just mm -hmm. Google Images or Dribble. Design Inspiration, mm -hmm. Dribble. We mm -hmm. find elements and colors and textures that already exist. We, we put them in buckets and then we start throwing them on our brandscapes to start to see what starts to work. Once mm -hmm. we, in those little sprints, we find areas that start to work. Then we take that and then we start crafting everything and start dialing things and exploring a little bit further. And, uh, and that's where we're going to do today is do that transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you yes. want to talk about the illustrations? Yeah. So on this mood board, I think this is kind of where we ended off. At. Right. So we wanted something a little more, you know, uh, playful, mm -hmm. bright, kind of inspired by the tons and tons of signage. Yeah, neon. In, and, and this illustration person. style, I, I don't know who did it. Christine yeah. found it, and, and it kind of had like a, a cool sort of yeah. quality to it. It, it was kind of uh, like hand done almost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it feels honest, approachable. Yeah. Yep. And I think it's something fun. Yeah, you don't see that, and you don't lose your appetite. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I can drive so with this. Characters. So I can kind of show you. So Christine and and I we're, we're not illustrators per se, we can kind of do little doodles and stuff. So we, we like that illustration style from what we put on our mood boards yesterday. So we have um, a designer slash illustrator in our office back in Pasadena. Her name's Carol. Cool. Um, so, um, what up, Carol? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Carol. Carol, are you listening? Hello. Sure. <laughs> are you here? So what we did is we, we tasked her with like, um, we like this illustration style. Um, what are some of the concepts and sort of the themes that we can use that are as relevant for the brand mm -hmm. um, that matches the brand brief and the sort of the walkie-talkie? Yeah. Um, the walkie-talk, for you don't know, is it's sort of, it plays back to that playfulness and the spirit that the siblings had growing up mm -hmm. and, and the chefs here. Um, it's also a play on when you go to these food halls that you normally are walking around and you're exploring and you're trying to figure out which which uh, food you want to try. So you're walking around, but it's also very much a social sort of um, gathering that you normally do with friends. So you're normally talking and con con conversating. So it's sort of walkie-talkie. Yeah. But it's also totally. a play on yakitori, yeah. Yeah. which is you know meat on, um, grilled meat on a mm -hmm. stick. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be vegetables as well. So we played with uh, those sort of things, which gave us a really nice sort of foundation, mm -hmm. a concept that we can have a lot of fun with. Awesome. Yeah. So before we jump into looking at these awesome illustrations, yep. by the way, they're beautiful. Carol's in the chat. <laughs> Great job from one illustrator to another. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we're going to do our giveaway very quickly. You thought oh, we yeah. forgot. We didn't. Mm. Just keeping you on your toes. So chat, make sure that you are logged in on Behance. If you're just coming to hang out with us, make sure you're watching on be.net slash live. If you're over on YouTube, come on over to Behance. Log in, and we want you to say something in chat. So maybe we can ask the chat members. Do you have a mm -hmm. question you want to ask to learn more about them? Mm. Oh, we're going to ask them? Yeah. Yeah. I. I always want to know, like, you know your audience. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I, I want to get a sense of um, 
who our audience is. I know it's typically people sort of seeking information mm -hmm. and it's normally sort of they're either students or uh, sort of young professionals. Right. Um, so I want to know what your guys' challenges are in sort of like trying to find your way, either just graduating or just finishing up your school mm -hmm. or trying to find a job. Those are sort of th the questions that we had, right. like when we were your age. So I, I'm curious what you guys are looking for and we can right. shed some light on that if we can. That's a great question. They could even be doing like a career shift down the line. That's really, <laughs> pricing is a challenge <laughs> from Camilla. Yeah, Camilla. <laughs> student, halftime graphic designer. So answer this question in the chat. Maybe we can pluck out a few as they fly by and you will be entered into the giveaway. Just be active in chat. Mm -hmm. Say hello if you haven't said hello yet. A simple hi in the chat that will get you entered and you could possibly win this pack of temporary Adobe tattoos. We've got the little toolbar on the left and some product mnemonics. We've got Photoshop Illustrator Dreamweaver Retro <laughs> in design and then you'll also win an Adobe Illustrator sticker and an Adobe stock sticker. Ooh. So go ahead and do that. And then after we do the giveaway, I'm gonna do a super quick show them how to use Capture so they know mm -hmm. how to do the challenge. Sure. Um, if you are just tuning in and haven't heard about the challenge yet, we like to have a different theme every day so that you can work alongside our friends as they work. So we're challenging you to use the pattern tool in Adobe Capture. It's a mobile app, totally free, awesome. Use that pattern tool and apply the pattern to some sort of collateral or marketing set. So if you click on the challenge tab above the chat chat pod, you can see all the info about that. You're gonna upload that uh, design in about an hour. That's when the deadline's gonna hit and Aaron and Christine will pick a winner. Mm. Yeah. I have some awesome stuff happening in chat. I saw someone, Camila, she posted something about um, pricing as a challenge. I, I know a lot of I, I've always was challenged with talking about money right. um, with, with clients, potential clients. So uh, if you guys have any specific questions about how to bid or mm. pricing, um, could you post something? Because I know that's something that I was never really good with money growing up. I just was never taught, you know, accounting or yeah. how, to, how to manage money. So, <laughs> so sometimes when I would go into a meeting, I remember my first job interview, they said, what are your rates? And I was kind of, I didn't know. Like, so aren't you I, supposed to tell me yeah. that? Right. And I was kind of like, I don't, 15 to $20? It's like an hour? And yeah. Because I didn't know. And so he was nice enough. He's like, well, we'll just split it. We'll do seventeen fifty. an hour. Yeah. But it's like you really couldn't need to kind of know your numbers mm -hmm. um, when you're like interviewing for a job. But also, what is that money conversation like when you're trying to get a new client mm -hmm. someone calls mm -hmm. you or there's a, a referral like how do you sort of bid for that project yeah. right um definitely before we answer another question do you want to announce the name of the winner yes <laughs> you're like go for it maybe <laughs> how do you say that I mean, let's try two different ways joe Jodes H? H. Or Hodes yeah. H? <laughs> Exclamation point. Exclamation point. <laughs> J-O-D-E-S H. You are the Jody, winner Jody's. of the giveaway during wow. the stream. And let us know in chat how to pronounce your name. We'd love yeah. to get it right. Phonetically. <laughs> obviously. Uh, so congrats. You've won some tattoos and some stickers. Adobe Live will be in contact with you um, in your Behance messages. Cool. Yes. And then while these questions about pricing are coming in. I'm just gonna do super, super yeah. duper quick, uh, show you how to use Capture if you've never mm -hmm. done it before. So here's the iPad. This one in the middle, right below the time is Adobe Capture. You can get it on Android and Apple devices. If you go ahead and open it, you're gonna log in with your Adobe ID, but you're gonna get to a screen that's like this. You'll see a bunch of tabs at the top. There's shapes, type, colors, materials, which we might be using some time for dimension, patterns and brushes. Brushes is my favorite. But we're gonna use patterns for today's challenge. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the camera icon. And you'll mm. see Whoa. Whoa. that my camera is turned on. You can see the studio kind of in a very abstract That's manner. So <laughs> Whoa. Yes, so this can make vector <laughs> or raster Whoa. patterns. And let's just, you can tap the screen to freeze it. Freeze. I'm going to select OK, then you can adjust your pattern. So let's get a little bit of the blue in there. Awesome. 
Save. Oh. This is using what? Just capture. Like Oh, very cool. Like the environment. Yeah, it's just using the, yeah. the camera. So I have my pattern saved, and you can see that we even have an Adobe Live April 24th um, library. We're going to save it to that. And from there, yes, I'm enjoying Capture. Mm -hmm. From there, I could send this to the desktop, and like it says in the Challenge tab, apply this in InDesign or Photoshop just using Creative Cloud libraries. So now you have no excuse not to enter the contest, mm -hmm. as far as I know, or the challenge. So get started, and if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in chat. Yeah. Okay. okay. Back I, to I saw a follow up on the pricing. Yes, please. I think it's a really great question. Um, I think Camila was asking, do you do you bid on a flat rate or mm. per the hour? Uh, and I, I think that's a, an excellent question because it's I, I I tend to go with establishing a flat rate. Um, I think what's important is to manage expectations when you're working with someone. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think normally you can sort of avoid a lot of sort of conflicts if you can come to an agreement before you start the engagement. Um, mm -hmm. So you can, you can negotiate what uh, the project is, the scope of work. So it might be three concepts, three mm -hmm. rounds of revisions, and we're going to do it in a month. So you want to really establish the scope mm -hmm. of work and then you have a price associated with that. So normally to do uh, price, uh, I normally try to gauge how many hours it might take, mm -hmm. and then I might put um, associate a number for that hour, like $50 an hour or $100 mm -hmm. an hour, whatever yeah. it, you're comfortable with, um, and then I might pad it. Mm -hmm. And so then I'll project, I'll say it's $1,000 to do that project, and there might be subtle negotiation. Mm -hmm. I think that works really well because before you start, you guys are on the same page and you guys are in agreement. Right. When you tend to do things per the hour, what can happen a lot of times, and we've experienced this, is you say, okay, let's do this project at $50 an hour and we'll log our hours. And what you start to do is you start doing your project and you spend some time and you're logging your hours and then you send the client an invoice and it's like, it's 20 hours. And then the client would be looking at your work and they start judging it and they start it happens way too frequently where they're like, why did it take 20 hours? I know. Yeah. Oh, man. Right? It's tough. I think it's like <laughs> right? super easy yeah. all the time. Can, can Yeah. You, can you finish this up in one more hour? And so what it does, it starts to create a little bit of tension mm -hmm. in that relationship. Right. And it starts to sour, sort of tarnish that mm -hmm. working experience. And I want to avoid that as much as possible. So you could be doing the greatest work, but if there's some part of that experience where um, it starts to sour it for them, you could potentially lose that relationship mm -hmm. after the project's done. So I always want to make sure that it's a great experience mm -hmm. for, for my customer. Okay. And part of that is managing expectations. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I like to sort of set like this, we'll do it for this, do we agree to this set number? So right. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of flat rates. I do not like doing hourly. Right, especially mm -hmm. for big projects that will right. require yeah. a lot of hours from a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you have a, a studio that's more than one yeah. person. Yeah. 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 And I think that's the best answer to the pricing question that I have heard yet on Adobe Live. <laughs> a lot of people like to skirt it. They're like, do whatever works for you. Yeah. I like Kevin, I think he says, um, charge by value, not hours. I think that's a really another great way of summing mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your clients are going to deem what you do. Uh, there's certain value there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know you have a certain level of experience and that you're going to be able to bring to them. Right. You're bringing value to them. So what is that worth to you because your time is valuable? And so this is where you do that negotiation of like, I think we settle right about here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Great, and another angle from Kevin's point is like what value is this project going to give your client? Mm -hmm. Like are you redesigning their entire brand or is it something a little smaller that maybe won't change their entire career by this redesign? So yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. I, I think uh, we are creative, so sometimes we, we look at it as like, I'm designing a logo, and it's like I'm, I'm providing you this physical logo. But I, I think if you think about how that impacts their business, the strategy side yeah, of exactly. what it's doing for their business, it's helping their business grow. It's mm -hmm. helping them to mm -hmm. um, connect with consumers and um, sort, of, um, sort of onboard more clients and sell more products. And so it's really not just a singular logo. It, the mm -hmm. logo is something that it's a, it's a part of their system that mm -hmm. allows them to succeed uh, and grow. So mm -hmm. what is that worth? So if uh, strong branding, um, let's say it costs $5,000 to do a system, but 
it's going to create uh, onboard, you know, maybe a hundred clients, mm -hmm. and then you bring in fifty thousand dollars worth of new business for them. Right. Yeah. It's like that five thousand is just such a small nominal fee yeah. relative to everything. So you have to understand that, and, and a lot of business people, you know, they're not creative, so they don't oftentimes understand this, but mm -hmm. so you have to be able to talk about the strategy and the business side of mm -hmm. why what you do is gonna help impact and grow their business as right. opposed mm -hmm. to, hey, I'm gonna design you a pretty logo with these pretty colors. Yeah. Then it's just art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to sort of make it part of an integral part of their the tool for their business to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once you start talking like that, then that number is like, well, I can help your business grow. You know, you're gonna continue to grow over the years. You know, it could be millions of dollars, so what is a fifty thousand dollar logo to you? Yeah, it's really not that much now, yeah. is it? Drop mm -hmm. in the bucket, right? Yeah. Pays for itself. Yeah, nice. So much knowledge being yeah. dropped. <laughs> Love it. Okay, finally back to Carol's yeah. illustrations. <laughs> oh yeah. So <laughs> we didn't forget Carol. Um, yesterday, so from the mood board, this is where we left off. So you know, we really like that illustration style, um, and I think when you're not an illustrator. I think, and a designer, like don't be afraid to use other resources. You can always, you know, collaborate with other people. So don't limit your vision and by your skill set. So what I had Carol do is I gave her this illustration style and I gave her um, a photo of one of the Japanese food stalls or stands yeah, that are on the street. So yeah. she kind of translated that into something that looked like this. So I think, you know, when you're art directing someone, it's kind of talking through like the nuances and characteristics of what the illustration is so that they understand and better apply it. And, and if you go back, Christine, the reason why we are here, yeah. the reason why we're referencing other sort of found artifacts and mm -hmm. other illustrators is we don't want to spend all the time illustrating all these things and later find out oh, it doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. So we want to find illustration styles or logo styles yeah. that are already sort of out there that we can kind of get a sense, yeah, I really like how that works in the system. And then we'll spend the time to find the person that can build it for us. And mm -hmm. if we can do it in-house, great. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to um, look for someone outside of house and sort of hire them to sort of yeah. craft it for us. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, you know, we, someone in-house was able to do it. So she worked on this last night because um, we knew that we couldn't do this in today's yeah. time. Yeah, but nice, Carol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you want to show the... Yeah, so I'll show you a few that So, you know, this is one of the stands. And then I kind of wanted her to leave some open space. So maybe we can, like, tweak these later, add right. the logo or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like a person grilling yakitori. I we love kinda this. have these... You know, someone holding a yakitori stick. It but almost, with kind of like attitude yeah, and like not just like... She's brandishing it. Yeah. Right. It almost looks like uh, Carol used capture to like oh. sketch this and then capture it as a vector shape. Yeah, maybe. Carol, tell us your secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Just kidding, you probably didn't use capture. But <laughs> maybe. Yes, yeah, so we're building these artifacts and we're not quite sure how we're going to use them, mm -hmm. but we know that we wanted all these little sort of nuggets um, yeah. of illustrations that we can start to integrate into this brand system. So mm -hmm. we gave her sort of like a punch list of mm -hmm. like, what if we did, you know, like uh, charcoal? Yeah. Because that's the cooking device to heat the, the mm -hmm. yakitori. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's nice that it has the, the negative and mm -hmm. the positive versions. Yeah, you so never know. having some variation on that is always good because you never know when where, where you're going to use it. Mm -hmm. Um, so we one. got some flags. Yeah. We, have, <laughs> Fight. we got a walkie-talkie right here. Some people kind of fighting with the Yeah, little guitars. dueling skewers. We're like, yeah. oh, maybe that's fun. We're not, we're not sure. So we just yeah. have these in our back pocket in Why case not? we want to use them. So we got these lamps. So we can kind of use them separately. Mm -hmm. Or, layered. you know, layered cool. together. <laughs> and we got um, some chickens carrying walkie-talkies. Um, I think it's a play on, I think, yakitori. So yaki means grilled, and tori means bird. Mm -hmm. So it's a walking, talking chicken. <laughs> yeah, and integrating, integrating and the, the theme. Yeah, so yeah. we really wanted to play off of this theme, and I think yeah. uh, trying to, uh, because the chefs are millennials, and they're tr mm -hmm. we're trying to appeal to a millennial crowd, foodies who are willing to explore, we wanted to have fun with this brand. Yeah. And so we're starting to assemble a lot of the artifacts that is going to give us a lot of room to play with it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, it fits the brand essence that is on the brand brief. 
you have to really understand the essence um, and what you're trying to accomplish for every restaurant and everyone is different. Right. Some are more serious yeah. you know, and some are more playful. So you, you really have to understand that. Right, this mm -hmm. would not fly, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, in certain companies. Yeah, so we're kind of revolving this whole thing around that walkie-talkie play. And we're thinking of like, you know, when it comes to brand voice, you know, maybe we can add type to some of these. Uh, maybe some walkie-talkie lingo mm -hmm. and see how we can apply that throughout the brand. Oh, walkie-talkie lingo. I like yeah, that. Like so, the codes. Cool. Yeah, so we're thinking like, you know, maybe on a to-go bag, it'll be like over and out or something. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I think we found like an inch. Or when they take your order, they can say, roger that. Yep, yep. roger over. that, <laughs> copy. Mm -hmm. Maybe the chefs in the kitchen, when you give them like an order, they're like 10-4, which means I understand the message yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. So it could be really fun. <laughs> go for Nikki. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Go for Nikki. So, you know, when you get to go order, you can say go for go for Aaron yeah. or mm -hmm. go for Kathleen. So this is where we talked yeah. yesterday about brand voice. So yeah, we're visual designers typically, so we are like craft things that are like pictures, pretty mm -hmm. pictures. But I think strong branding has that voice, those words mm -hmm. to be able to help articulate it and give it a different facet that you can't always do with just illustrations totally. or design. Yeah. So. Do you have a copywriter on your team? Or are you all kind of copywriters? We, we're we all kind of copywriters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, high level, sort of like mm -hmm. little sort of nuggets of copy. We, we're we not proofreaders. Mm -hmm. we're not, yeah. It's not Someone our strength. Someone else can do that. Yeah, but we're really pretty good at crafting little sort of uh, little words and lots to give the brand shape. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. I think um, when we left yesterday, we kind of worked on a couple of things from the mood board, um, just roughly playing with more um, layering and depth. And, and integrating some, some of those artifacts at Carol. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. So we kind of have this walkie talkie. This is kind of the look and logo that we're kind of going for. Mm -hmm. You know, that talk bubble. I think um, having a good shape for your logo is always great. Um, yeah, you know, can... even some like nuances in the type, mm -hmm. and then pairing it with something such as the chicken. Right. So, I mean, a logo doesn't always just have to be in one form. It could be in a shape. You can take it out of the shape. Right. Um, and that's what creates a more robust branding system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we kind of have, I think, some references that we liked yesterday. Ooh. Yeah, so a like lot of that. layering and depth can make it really fun. Like even this pretty simple. Right. Yeah. So we, we're, this system's going to have a lot of touch points. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. probably a lot of takeout. So there's going to be takeout bags and in cups and. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're doing like possibly like a cone where you can put the skewers yeah. in or something. Maybe a uniform. So we like to have a lot of these sort of artifacts and textures and colors to start mm -hmm. to play with. So I think we we have kind of a pretty cool little toolbox of mm -hmm. of stuff here to, to sort of draw from. And so uh, Christine yeah. and I are going to start to demonstrate, like, how do we take these elements and how do we start to refine them and start to build some sort of visual sort of system mm -hmm. um, that we can start to apply on, on different things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. These, these items on the, on the right here, uh, just some further inspiration. Mm -hmm. We, we yeah. like the sort of the layering, the boldness of mm -hmm. it, how simple and bold these are. So now we have, like, a really good sort of toolbox mm -hmm. of artifacts um, to start kind of playing with things today. Yeah. So I think you also created this little area. I think it means... This yakitori, yakitori. Japanese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just Google translation. We just... Yeah. Yakitori, and that's <laughs> what nice. popped up. <laughs> Grab some kanji, you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll open up some maybe boards and we can start exploring. Very cool. I'm excited to see what happens from here. It seems like some magic happened mm. overnight. <laughs> so, yeah, so what is this that you set up here? Like, so what I like to do before exploring is kind of thinking ahead about what my touch points are ahead of time, just so I know that my the time being spent is going to something that's actually going to be produced. Yeah. Because um, sometimes, you know, you can get wander off somewhere else, but you're not... In, that's not even part of the scope of work. So I think some of the deliverables are definite are the cups, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps um, a cone or some something to put the skewer in. 
and then a to-go bag and a to-go box. Cool. And so then, I just like having that in front of me already, just so I know. Yeah, you already know how mm -hmm. it's going to all work together. And at the end yeah. of the stream, I think after we do the challenge submissions, I think we're going to try and drop one of these touch or one of these artifacts onto a touch point in Dimensions, yeah. an actual 3D model mock-up that will have the warping and the lighting. Mm -hmm. It'll be beautiful, Yeah. I think. So yeah, let me just grab. Thanks. So, Christine's sort of getting things set up where she can start to throw things against the wall and see what starts to stick. Mm -hmm. um, she has a lot of artifacts to work with, and she might sort of pull some new artifacts. Um, where do you like to go when you're sort of trying to find elements? Artifacts? Yeah. Um, I mean, it could be. There's like just so much on the internet. Um, I can also look through books sometimes. I'll take pictures, um, other inspiration from places where you've been, mm -hmm. um, even physical things in the outside world, shapes, colors. Um, so sometimes it doesn't even have to be related to a restaurant. Um, sometimes I think when you are doing a restaurant and you're looking at other restaurants, you kind of pigeonhole yourself sometimes. So it's kind of good to look at other design like so it could be like a vintage can for coffee or something oh nice you know so yeah. i think having that range can always help your creative mm -hmm. cool yeah so i kind of had this shape for the bag so i don't know if it's let's say that's like a craft and sometimes i'll work flat sometimes and then just put it on a render later on mm -hmm. Very cool. Just kind of playing around. Yeah, so I don't know if like this is a side of a bag and it's maybe has a contrast color. Ooh. Yeah. So she's doing like quick little moves. We're, we're, we're not looking for perfection at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to sort of just get high level sort of uh, perspective on what's working or not working. Mm -hmm. Not looking at the details per mm -hmm. se. We're just trying to capture something that starts to look and feel right. We're, we're taking a lot of the sort of the principles of design when we're doing this, however. It's like contrast and hierarchy and balance. Um, and so those are certain aspects that we're, we're sort of always sort of in the back of our mind as we're laying these things out. Uh, and so, so start to go in certain areas and then she'll probably shift and do some iterations around that. Yeah, it's just playing. Yeah. And like you said, kind of throwing it at the wall and see what yeah. sticks. Mm -hmm. So I think at some point we will probably add texture and add little little nuggets of copy and mm -hmm. little details on this. But those again are a little sort of granular. So we want to kind of do big picture stuff first. Yeah. Right, because those little things aren't going to be what makes it like a successful design. I don't right. think it's these. Not out, not on the outset. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately in the end, those little details is what's going to sort of give it that polish and yeah. um, make those things more memorable. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Details are really important, but there's the right time for it, and that's normally towards the latter part of it. Right. Ooh, cool. Kind of cropping it yeah, a little bit. Yeah, kind of see. So I have mm -hmm. some tips. Do you want me to throw one out there while she's sort of laying some groundwork on yeah. these, these brands? And then we'll come back and see what magic that she has produced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, oh, cool. My screen's up. Um, so this, these are some tips uh, put together by Nicole. Uh, she's um, a designer at Farm Design. She's been with us about three years now. Um, uh, she also reached out to us, um, to me, via email. She kept sending me emails, like, like a job, an internship. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I probably, on a weekly basis, I probably get anywhere from 40 to 50 sort of inquiries for jobs or internships. So I get a lot, so it's sort of bombarded, mm -hmm. and I still have to manage the office and yeah. clients wow. and the designers. So it's like, it, it's kind of hard to sort of filter through those things. So you, you really want to have something that stands out, and I think that resume is that thing that, that starts the conversation. So so Nicole, she, got, she got, I say bug me, but it's important. It, it does make, a, it does, uh, 
resonate with me at a certain point. She, after like our third email, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna dig deeper and I wanted to learn more about her. Mm -hmm. So I set up an interview and had her come in. And I'll be honest, and I think she would be the uh, first one to attest to this as well, is her portfolio wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. It was sound. Um, I didn't see a lot of flaws, but it didn't, it didn't really stand out. It wasn't great. But what was the most important thing is when I was interviewing Nicole is her personality. She let mm -hmm. her personality come through, and I really wanted to know um, her background and what she's about. She likes to rock climb. She's um, She had like a spirit about her. Mm -hmm. And so... Again, we tried her out as an intern, and it was just a couple days a week. Um, and then every day that she'd come in, she was contributing. And then some days she would, uh, we would assign her a project, she would leave, and then she'd come back in and she would have designs that I'd never seen before. And I'm like, wait a minute, you didn't do this the last day you were here. And mm -hmm. she's like, no, I worked on it at home. Right, yeah. And so... It's tenacious. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So she, she was really hungry. Um, it was also, I think, her personality and how she, she contributed is on the days that she wasn't in the office, that everyone kind of was like, oh, we're, we miss her and Aww, her, her yeah, presence. Right. And I think that's what's really important, especially for like large, or I'm sorry, small studios or environments, that culture is really important. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to contribute to it. You don't want to be sort of the one in the corner just kind of like, you know, hammer it away at a design and then you leave. It's like, I, I think it's really important for, especially for small um, uh, design studios, that you're an integrate, integral part of what they're about and right. that you care. Mm -hmm. And she had those attributes. So here's some tips that, um, and now she's a rock star. I mean, she mm -hmm. is a powerhouse when it comes to design because um, she just takes in all the lessons that she's learned in a really short um, period of time and she integrates it. Um, so here's some tips that she has for you guys. All right, Nicole, let's hear it. Yeah, three tips to becoming a leader in design. Mm. Um, so she wants to talk about, uh, number one, taking the bull by the horns. Ooh. Number two, Dangerous. don't be in the wrong room. And number three, create a culture of curiosity. And she says, say that three times. <laughs> create a culture of curiosity. Create a culture of curiosity. Create a culture of curiosity. That's not so hard. It was okay. not hard, Nicole. <laughs> Your challenge yeah. was weak. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it. Bring it. Okay. Uh, okay, so first one, take bull by the horns. Um, oh, I updated this. So um, it says, whether you go to prestigious design school or not, your design education is, is what you make out of it. 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's your yeah. output, right? So it's, Again, it's not like you just go to class, you sort of, you check in and you check out, and it's like at the end, you know, you have this resume and there's someone's gonna give you a job. Right. It's like you really have to do a lot of output and you have to bring more to the table than what's already there. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, regardless of where you're going to school, or if you're just going to the school of hard knocks and you're just learning on your own, right. I think that's fine, as long as you're constantly sponge and you're trying to figure things out. The internet is such a, invaluable sort of resource for just knowledge. You can go to Skillshare, you can go to just YouTube, and mm -hmm. there's just, you can go to this, uh, my friend has this um, channel called The Future, where he shares a lot of information on right. design and the strategy of design. So there's just a plethora of information. Adobe Live. Adobe, yes. Yeah. Free resource. <laughs> go out there and seek it, and you will find it. Yes. Information is out there. Uh, second one, be eager and take ownership of your craft. And so just never settle. Just mm -hmm. always uh, pursue what's important to you and constantly refine it. And especially for students, she said there's a wealth of resources at your fingertips. That's what so, you're paying for. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you, I think in life, you're always trying to find opportunities. Um, and I think I mentioned yesterday, it's like, you know, pay attention. Yeah. And so if you're looking for opportunities, you'll be able to find it. And so whether you know it or not, there's uh, so many resources there that can help you get to that next level, like professors or internships freelance work, um, volunteer work, oh, yeah. everything you do is an opportunity and it's it's your ability to sort of show who you are mm -hmm. and sort of demonstrate your brand. And so as a designer, if I met you at a conference or um, a, if you're a student and I see that you have great work ethics and then someone says, hey, I'm looking for a designer, I'd be like, oh, I have this person. Yeah, connect. Right, so always think that there's always opportunities, so you always want to be mindful of that. Um, her second tip is, 
Oh. Don't be in the wrong room. And I really love this one. Is, oh, um, interesting. She <laughs> says, if you, are in the, if you are the best in the room, then you are in the wrong room. So I, I love this one because I believe uh, a mindset, I believe in a growth mindset as sort of a fixed mindset. In order to get into a growth mindset, you always have to be seeking knowledge and wanting to learn and grow. And so if you're in a room where you're not growing and people aren't challenging you, mm -hmm. then I think you start to get stagnant. So you want to sort of uh, surround yourself in, in an environment with people who are going to challenge you and make you feel really uncomfortable. Ooh, in a good way? In, in a good way. <laughs> okay. yeah, I think growth is about being uncomfortable. And yeah. I think um, your sort of uh, your mind and your body will change and get stronger through adversity. And so being uncomfortable is how you do that. So get, like they say, do something that um, you yeah. Do something that scares you every day. Yeah. Right. It's just sort of one of those things. So, getting out of the room, if you're the most knowledgeable one. Right. And if you are the most knowledgeable one, you better be sharing all that knowledge to everyone in that room. <laughs> better. Right. <laughs> so, how do you feel about that? Since you are the creative director. Oh, I don't know studio. much. So I mean, don't I, I don't feel like I'm the. <laughs> just this, manage. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, um, I, I encourage everyone to um, share information. Every Monday morning, we, we mm -hmm. start our week by, um, we go over like the projects that we have mm -hmm. for that week. Uh, and then we also end it with a share. Oh, cool. So someone is, um, each week is tasked to bring, come in and share something to the entire staff to teach them something, to inspire them with something. And so we grow on that every day. Or if you find something online, um, you email to everyone in the office like, hey, check this out. Right or there's this new t cool technique. And so I, I learn from everyone mm -hmm. around me. So I'm certainly not the smartest one in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm just the oldest one typically. <laughs> so that doesn't make me smarter. Right, cool. And I think we share from like, you know, anything from whether it's just like a small tip on, you know, an app, whether it's Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever. So, or it could be something that's just life inspiring or okay. motivating. Mm -hmm. I love uh, learning specifically new shortcuts yeah. for tools. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like such a tiny little piece of knowledge that someone can just be like, hey, have you ever done this? Like Commando. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> that's like a very minuscule example, but cool. I'm trying to go back to your computer, Aaron. But yeah, so I have one more share <laughs> it's that. ignoring uh, me. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, maybe then, if I just hit a bunch of buttons. Boop, boop. Button mashing. But you can start talking about it. If yeah, like so it. Her, her third one was uh, create culture of curiosity. Um, so there we it, go. And I think it's really important to sort of be curious, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, I think creatives in, in general, we, we, we kind of have that mindset of we're curious and we want to learn and grow and, and, and create things. Um, so she says if you don't know how to do something, figure it out. So don't make excuses. Don't sort of like settle like, uh, I, I don't have the resources or I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what? Seek it. Someone out there knows it. A friend, YouTube, right. um, pick up a book. It's there. That's how you learn and grow. Um, so seek it. Um, I mean, we're inherently we're sort of problem solvers anyway. Uh, so go out there and try to figure out how to sort of get out of that sort of that rut. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, she says, don't let the computer or creative block control you. Take charge and make design your craft. Uh -huh. um, I think what I see oftentimes as a creative director is as we're designing, sometimes we're so, we're on the computer and we're utilizing like Pinterest or some other resource and we're like looking for that answer in yes. that space. Thousand and, percent. That's, and that's fine, but sometimes that acts as like a crutch. Yeah. Like, that's, we're leaning mm -hmm. so heavily on trying to find something that is already crafted mm -hmm. or to inspire us. And sometimes you have to sort of get rid of that crutch and go somewhere else and look for other inspiration. So sometimes just shutting down your computer, just walking outside mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. doing something different is really important to sort of shifting things. So uh, a good example is if you like working in Illustrator, maybe um, with, with a mouse, maybe you work on a tablet Mm -hmm. with a pen tool or if you like illustrating with your right hand maybe you illustrate with your left hand yeah 
um, all these sort of different things are going to sort of shift the way you look at things and, and how you craft things. So right. always be curious, try new things. Don't don't get too comfortable. Yeah, and don't be scared. And I think yesterday, well, you Oops. can be scared, but yesterday you talked about how um, you have such a culture of not being scared to make mistakes, yeah. which I think is necessary for this kind of action because if you're scared to make a mistake then you're scared to be curious and explore yeah there's um i follow this um guy on youtube his name's uh casey neistat he's a huge vlogger. oh this one guy named right? casey neistat right no he's i i like him some people are like eh, but I, I really like him he he mm -hmm. has a really simple one that uh really sticks with me and he, his thing is do what you can't mm. and uh when i first heard that i'm like do what you can't it's like, oh, that is so great. It's like, mm -hmm. it's so easy to do the things that you're comfortable doing. Um, but if you try to do things that you're uncomfortable and do things that people are saying, no, don't, don't do that, it doesn't right. work. Mm -hmm. it, I think those are the people who are changing the world. Those, the, what, those creatives that are exploring and um, trying to make a difference. And those are the ones that are daring to sort of like do something different. So, I really embrace that do what you can yeah. sort of philosophy. And that's that part of that curiosity as well. Don't, right. don't, don't limit yourself. Right. It's only something that you can't do until it's something that you can do. Yeah. Like it flips yeah. immediately. And then it goes back to like, it's okay to fail. So if mm -hmm. you start pursuing, doing something that you're uncomfortable with that you don't think you can do, you'll be, you'll surprise yourself. Oh yeah. And you, you probably won't be like amazing at whatever it is or of whatever you're endeavoring to do immediately, but that's not the point. It's not the point to yeah. be perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> so, oh. thanks, Nicole. Those are Nicole's we, um, tips. We all have others down the road, but um, yeah. So, some magic has happened. Yeah. So I was just doing some Whoa. You know, <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick sprints on uh -huh. these. Um, so nothing really perfect yet. Um, and that's kind of my process. I don't like anything to be perfect at the beginning. Right. I kind of just want to let my mind loose when I start doing these. You can just see the some of the iterations on here. Hmm. Maybe messaging on the side. Maybe it's simple. How busy can it get? Is there a contrast panel? Um, is there some use of texture? So I kind of just started pulling stuff from my mood board. And I think there's always still some room to, you know, is there a different kind of pattern that you can bring in? Um, let's see what I have here. So while she's doing that, oftentimes in the office with multiple designers, uh, I'll probably task different designers to explore different avenues with these sort of artifacts, right. and then we'll see how they work. So I'm going to actually um, take some of the artifacts, maybe introduce some new ones, and I'm gonna build like a, like a pattern. I'm, I'm kind of in my head, I have mm -hmm. like a wallpaper pattern, ah. type of thing that maybe mm -hmm. we can use on food wraps yeah, or mm -hmm. one of the touch points. So while she's doing that, um, I'm gonna do something that's more micro. She's kind of doing something a little more macro mm -hmm. in terms of um, the, the boldness of the yeah. graphics. I'm gonna try something different, so. Cool. I'm excited to see your, your pattern technique. I feel like everyone has a different one. <laughs> yeah. And we do have that pattern tool in Adobe Capture that we showed you earlier. It is a new release, this vector pattern. So feel free to try that out while Aaron is working on his. So I, I'm going to apologize which I, I don't like to make excuses, but I'm so old school. I, I have all these great designers that I barely <laughs> touch the computer anymore other than to check my email. And huh. <laughs> so, so what do you do? Are you saying you don't design that much anymore or are you design like on paper? I'm, I'm designing in my head. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I will go to computer because mm -hmm. I love designing. And that was one of the biggest challenges when I was farm 1.0 as yeah. the solopreneur working mm -hmm. out of my home office. It was, uh, I, I was sort of the master of the craft mm -hmm. and I was doing everything. And, um, and I was concerned with like building a team and becoming a manager that I would lose the design aspect totally. and I would just be like, just sort of managing people mm -hmm. and that did not interest me. Um, so, but when I started hiring people and working with like-minded people who are highly creative and brought 
different ideas to the table that I didn't have, mm -hmm. I became very much a part of the creative. Even though I might not have been pu um, pushing the pixels, mm -hmm. um, I, I was involved in the creative. And so working with designers, say, what if we did this? And then they can say, well, I was thinking about this. There's this sort of push and pull and this collaboration mm -hmm. that you create some really cool magical things. So even though I'm not the one clicking on the mouse, right. um, sharing ideas and, and sharing your vision, like what if we tried this? Um, so at the end, oftentimes the projects that uh, we showed on our portfolio, it's typically not just one person in the office who starts from A to Z. Right. It's normally a, a compilation of, of all the designers in the office. There might be one designer in this case like doing the illustration and one might do the logo and one might be sort of assembling it. Um, so, and then everyone takes sort of ownership of that. And I think that's what the great thing about working with the team um, who uh, is like-minded and is willing to collaborate because they can build something together. It is so much better than if it's just one singular person yeah. because you, you have all these sort of superpower skills design-wise as opposed to one who has just like, you know, a one sort of one power. Yeah, right. It is super, it's a super team. It's almost yeah, like right? uh, Megatron or <laughs> Power Rangers. <laughs> So this is a test. Might be a little rusty with Illustrator. Oh. Not designing very much oh. recently, <laughs> physically. So they're gonna be like, why isn't he using that short key? I'm like. If it works, it I works. I forgot it. <laughs> it's totally okay. I know a lot, of a lot of people have their workflows and efficiencies and just gotta let people make the way they make. It's all right. So chat, we do have 17 more minutes. You can see below us the countdown. 17 minutes until the challenge deadline hits. We are challenging you to use Capture to make a pattern and then use that pattern to brand some collateral. So check out the challenge tab. That should be over here, up here, uh, to get more info about it. We'll provide some assets for you to use, really simple. And you have 17 minutes to get those uploaded. And then Aaron and Christine will look through them all. They'll all be featured live. And we'll pick from like a top three or five, maybe give some feedback, some critiquing. Mm -hmm. And the winner will be featured and win a prize. Woo woo. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like to win prizes? I don't care what it is. Right. I just want to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. the best. I never win at anything. <laughs> I know. Everyone always says that. And it's like, well, that's the yeah. point. <laughs> Like raffles. Right. Never. Oh. I don't think I've ever won a raffle before. And the day that you do will be the best day of yeah. your life. And I'm going to text you, Kathleen. <laughs> yes. I finally won. I won the game. <laughs> Cowboy's wondering how many pages do we need? Just one image, Cowboy, for the challenge would be great. <clears throat> His name's Cowboy? Yes. <laughs> Cowboy Networks. Cowboy Network. His name is whatever he wants it to be. Uh, Camilla's coming back with a great question, asking how important is it to get away from the computer in the creative process? And we kind of talked about that earlier. Um, I think it's important. Um, I think sometimes when we're working on something too long, like, I don't know, I just get sucked into this not inspired, like, state of mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm stagnant. So right. stepping away, talking to someone, um, Talking to someone can get your creative juices flowing again. So really? just get up on the desk, you know, ask the person next to you, ask anyone. Ask anyone really. anything. Yeah. So are you mostly saying like asking about the project you're working on or is mm -hmm. this totally like non-work related, something else inspirational? Or wait, was this yeah. for me? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. That? No, when you when you go and talk to someone, like, are you talking about the project and how to work through it, or are you just like totally stepping away from the project mm -hmm. and having a different life conversation? If I get stuck, mm -hmm. I think both. I think when I get stuck on a project, though, I'll ask someone, um, "Hey, can you come over, take a look at this mm -hmm. real quick?" Because sometimes we have internal critiques later on, so sometimes I don't like to wait till internal critique. I'd rather ask someone and get their opinion on it already. Right. As early as you can, mm -hmm. really. Um, once you start to feel like you're not going anywhere or it's you're not digging the right hole anymore. Oh, um, I like that. Yeah, just <laughs> ask someone. Because cool. then that can spark an idea. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
definitely. Uh, mm-hmm. Munir wants to know, how do you deal with a client that acts polite in the beginning and becomes rude in the middle of the project? <laughs> no names mentioned. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or even someone asked earlier, a client that uh, sets expectations with you in the beginning and then strays from them later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we're challenged with these all the time. Uh, I think managing and setting expectations early is really important. I think in the proposal, that's where you can always sort of draw back to, go back to the proposal, right. to have a well-written proposal outlining the details and the deliverables um, is, is very important. So you know, like, it's three rounds and not 20 rounds of revisions. Oof. Yeah. Um, um, or if it's any additional rounds beyond three, or however many you want to do, might cost X amount per round. Mm-hmm. And so normally with a client, when you start to set those expectations, they'll stop, they'll stop sort of going willy-nilly and trying yeah. to have you do more and more and more and it, when they know there's a, a price tag associated with that. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's the proposal as, aspect of it. Um, I think the other thing that keeps uh, things in check, uh, sort of a checks and balances with your, with your client is building um, sort of a, a brand, uh, sort of a brand deck. Um, a brand deck is sort of it outlines, what we like to do is those ask those four questions. Who are you? Who needs to know? Why should they care? And how will they find you? And so those decks that we normally put together are anywhere from 60 to 80 pages. Wow. And so we put this together, it has a lot of detail. <laughs> we share it with the client. They adjust it like, you know, I, don't th- I think you, it's, it's not quite right or we refine it and then we dial it in. That acts as our, as our sort of our roadmap and so we're, we're, we're constantly referring back to that brand deck, and that brand deck establishes things like, what is the brand essence? What are our goals? And so let's say in the brand deck, the client says, I want something that is um, youthful, playful, fun, and cheery. I like rainbows, let's say. So we design, we start designing uh, a project that is sort of has fun colors mm-hmm. and it has rainbows and unicorns and, and, and hearts, whatever it might be. But then they later say, hey, I'm thinking about maybe skulls and crossbones. It's sort of like- 180. Right? <laughs> so how the, that way you can go back to the brand deck and say, this is what we agreed to yes. based on what we heard from you. And we basically all signed off on it. Mm-hmm. So now that you've shifted away from that, you know, we're sort of off scope now. So mm-hmm. what do we do? Yeah. Do we do we write the ship and go back to the scope, or if they're like, no, I want to go this completely different direction, then we need to reset the parameters, mm-hmm. reset the proposal, and it's like, okay, in order to do that, we're going to have to redo this front end. It's going to cost X amount more. So normally, when you start talking about the money, what you need to feel comfortable doing, yes, then they have to make hard decisions. Like, okay, I'm willing to do that. Um, it, it's sometimes you work with clients that I call sort of like. They, they're constantly moving furniture in the room. Mm, mm-hmm. And it's sort of uh, like like my mom will, like, honey, can you move the couch over into this corner? And, they, yeah. and then you move it over the corner, and they, it, does it have good feng shui? Does it look right? Is right. It, can I see the TV? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, it works. And then the next week, be like, hmm, what if we move the TV over here, and maybe you move the couch over here? It's like, what was wrong with the previous setup? And so right. you're constantly moving mm-hmm. furniture around the room. And it's like, it's just different. It may not necessarily be better. It may not necessarily be worse. Right. And so with clients, we want to try to avoid them moving furniture around the room too yeah. much. And so having that sort of, um, that brand deck to make sure everyone is sort of like agreeing to mm-hmm. and moving forward to, that's the checks and balances that we can use to say, whoa, um, let's pump the brakes a little bit. I think we're kind of veering off the tracks. Right, yeah. Uh, Camilla says the, I know what I like when I see it client. Oh, those are the worst. <laughs> That's even worse than moving furniture <laughs> around the room. It's like building a house and then tearing it down over and over again. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, so those sort of, I know when I see it, um, I think normally how you address that is you need to have those um, objective measures. Um, so so I, I believe you have to ask a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. So I, uh, there's this saying, like, you ask a question three times to get to the truth. <laughs> so I think as designers, we are actually, we become like therapists, where, and then our clients are the patient. And 
basically just sit on the couch, we got you taken care of, and you ask them questions and you get them to deliver the answer. Right. Um, so as opposed to you sort of saying, this is what I think we should yeah, do, because prompting. you're just projecting what yeah. your you know, objective is. It's like, it's about them. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I want them to say what it is. And so when they say it, they believe it. That's so true. So it's like asking the right questions. Um, um, yeah, so. That's great. Yeah. Ask a lot of questions. You want to be able to um, diagnose before you prescribe. So you just don't prescribe uh, something without knowing what the problem is and what the challenges are. Yeah. Um, and so that in order to do that, you have to ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, someone, Christina says that she likes your gray iteration. My gray iteration. It's the see. second one. This one? Maybe oh. the one with the texture or that one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, how are you feeling about all this? Talk about the, the chips, like, so oh, yeah. when we get so to a certain point. Oh, yeah, so one thing. The chips. Yeah, so you see these swatches right here? Mm hmm And you know how those little dots, you can kind of make them, like, a swat color or um, a Pantone? Mm-hmm. So what we like to do um, to make, mm -hmm. like, quick adjustments is if I want it to make, uh, like, another color. Oh, so global you'll, colors. I'll do global colors. Gotcha. So that's just like another First way spot. we kind of like. It's a really quick way to mm -hmm. sort of do color explorations. Because if you don't have chips set up, this is a, mm -hmm. sort of a workflow, um, sort of best practices is have chips in your color palette. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Call it out and use those chips. So when you want to like play with colors, mm -hmm. you don't have to select everything that mm -hmm. is that color to sort of change it. You can just do it by just simply double clicking that swatch and doing a quick exploration in that yeah. way little edit. There's also mm -hmm. yeah. recolor artwork and edit mm -hmm. colors, but this is probably a quicker yeah. way to do it. That goes back to the fact that there's a million different ways to do the same thing in Illustrator, but yeah. depends yeah. what you're using it for. Everyone's got their own way. Oh yeah. <laughs> and chat, there's seven minutes to get your submissions in for the challenge. We'll be looking at them probably right around 12.30, because it seems like there's quite a few. And we're also gonna be jumping into Dimension a little bit at the end of the stream, just to introduce you all mm -hmm. to it. Cool. Yeah, and Chad, if you have any more questions, you are all asking great questions and you know you're gonna get a great transparent answer. You wanna play with um, what, maybe another touch point and yep. maybe shift? Mm -hmm. sure. Like maybe do a different hierarchy or yep. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of come back to this, and I, I'm building a pattern. Maybe we can throw on something later. Okay, cool. Um, oh, I see what you mean by building a, a pattern out of all of the different yeah. little assets. Yeah, so I'm trying to, I, I like to build a little hierarchy. So I, the brand is walkie talkie, so I'm kind of making that a little bit larger than some of these other elements. Right. And I'm trying to find a, a sort of a pattern here. I'm going to start to integrate some words in here to get a little brand voice. Um, so I have a lot of really great artifacts to work with right mm -hmm. now. Mm -mm. Uh, Christina's wondering, if you didn't learn the printing processes or processes in school for design, how would you recommend learning them? If you didn't learn them in school. So I think, well, if you have an internship, it would be great to always ask questions when you don't know something. Oh yeah, because they're like, well, they're an intern, they ask a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, don't be afraid to ask, you know, anyone that is experienced, because it just shows that, you know, you're interested and that you care about the process. And, you know, ask if you can go to, um, what do you call it? Press check? Yes, a press check. Ooh, what's that? Um, so it's where, you know, if you're working on a project, you can go to where they actually are printing it. Oh, I see. Um, so they're adjusting things on the machines, um, mm -hmm. whether it's UMYK, you get to learn about like Pantone colors, different printing techniques that you might not have known. Um, and they're super knowledgeable of that. So I would recommend like, if you're starting somewhere, you could be like, can I go to a press check? And I think, I want to see why not. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, Camilla says yeah. you can talk to a printer, take a small project to a professional printer, and ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Totally. I, I, think I, have, a, I have a tip, actually, from oh, one of the other designers who, who sort of talks about that. Maybe can we jump to that? Sure, let's do it. Okay. Screen. Okay, so this, this designer is Melina. 
She's actually one who did these little cute little illustrations oh, of nice. us as well. Nice job, Melina. Uh, she found us. I think I posted something on AIGA mm -hmm. um, a job board. Uh, she's a designer out of Austin, Texas, and so she living in Austin, just graduated, and said, I, "I'm really interested in working for Farm Design." And one thing I I, I put a lot of value um, on people. And so I don't hire people right out of the gate. Like, you could have the best portfolio. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hire you just by that virtue. I want to make sure that you fit in with the culture. Um, and so I said, your portfolio is really good. Um, and I know you live in Austin. How is this going to work? Right. And she's like, I, I will come out there and stay, and we'll do a trial basis. Mm -hmm. So she, she um, I think she stayed with a relative, an aunt in the area, and she worked with us. I said, let's let's try it for a month, and if it doesn't work, you know, no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. uh, if it works, then you know, we'll take the next step. Cool. And so she was here with with us for a month, but after I think one week, <laughs> I knew that she was. Yeah. She so I offered her a job right away. Wow, that's we didn't cool. we didn't wait the yeah. month mm -hmm. to do it, and that's sort of our policy is like, we want to make sure that the personalities that they fit with the culture that they can contribute. And Melina was one of those mm -hmm. people. So did she Melina. relocate to California? Yeah. yeah so then she yeah. drove back. Um, they got a U-Haul and they put their cat in it and all their the furniture <laughs> and they just like they made the trek out. Um, yeah. So <laughs> cool, Melina. Let's hear what you have. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Melina. So she's right out of school. She has just a little over one year experience, mm -hmm. but you would never know it. She, she's mm -hmm. like a quick learner. Um, but her advice is be nice to vendors. I love that. <laughs> and it's because what they are, they, they're a valuable partner in the sit, in the whole process of what you're doing. I think oftentimes with designers, we, we're, we're, we're crafting something, some pretty pictures, and we're crafting whatever we're working on. But what oftentimes happens is then you have to hand your baby off to someone else. Mm -hmm. So either with someone in production or a vendor to then execute it. Right. And sometimes if it's not managed properly, then things could, all the details could go wrong. Right. And so it's really important to sort of see through all the way through that entire process. And so working and having a, a good relationship with your vendors is really important to make sure that the end result is good. Because what can ultimately happen is you're working with a client, the client loves the design, mm -hmm. and then you hand all the artifacts to a, a, print, uh, a printer or a vendor and you're not coordinating, no one's manning the ship or guiding them. Um, and they produce something and, and it's inferior, mm -hmm. and then it gets delivered to the client, the client is gonna be unhappy with the end product, and you're part of that equation. So even though you sort of did an amazing job designing it, but they're unhappy with the final piece that they have, right. again, it then tarnishes that experience. So we don't wanna have any of those lingering doubts of like, uh, because you want repeat business with them. Otherwise, it's like, if they're thinking about a new job, they're like, uh, that company, they just kind of, I wasn't happy with the end result, yeah. but it might have been the vendor. So vendors are really important. So her, her advice is, um, don't just send an email, pick up the phone. Nice. Um, I, I think it's so easy. Like we're, we're, uh, we're so used to like texting and we're just, you know, you can respond when you, when you have the time yeah. or you can kind of ignore it. Um, we kind of live in that sort of era now with technology, mm -hmm. um, in the digital world. So. I, I'm kind of old school. I believe in picking up the phone and having a conversation with someone. Yeah, it gets so much more done. Right? And you, you, can, you can have those conversations with them and say, are, are there other techniques that we might be able to try? Yeah. Are there any challenges? Would you advise that maybe we do something differently? Mm -hmm. um, and so having those conversations and understanding what their capabilities are, and oftentimes they'll come up with like really cool ideas like, oh, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Or what if we use this different paper as opposed to this one? Yeah. So, and you wouldn't know that unless you had this relationship with the vendor and had those, those conversations. She says the second one is ask questions until you, you can process and understand it. Um, so again, Melina's just one year out of school, but I, I totally trust given her projects because she follows a process and if she doesn't know things, that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. She's going to find the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's all just about asking questions with the vendors. Right. Um, and <laughs> she says, last one is make connections, become BFFs. I, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's really important to build those relationships. I think business is about people mm -hmm. and building relationships. Um, 
totally so that's is. sort of tied into what we were talking a little bit, and that's from our designer, Melina. Yeah, fresh out of school. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. And you I would never know it, though. She's. She sounds like a superstar. Organized. She's kind of like yeah. the grandma in our office. <laughs> the she's youngest like grandma. The youngest one, but she's got an old soul. <laughs> call her a baby grandma. <laughs> baby grandma. Wow. She is our little baby grandma. I love that. <laughs> uh, chat, we have passed our challenge submission deadline. So we'll be looking at some submissions maybe uh, in a couple minutes after Christine works maybe a little bit longer. Mm. And then we'll, we have about 30-ish minutes left. So we're gonna be picking winners for the challenge, for one winner. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going over what we worked on today, what we'll work on tomorrow, and jumping into Dimension just a little bit. It's a great prototyping tool. So you move to a different touch point. So I moved through a different touch point. Um, Picking up the just lingo. because, you know, yesterday I talked about, you know, times and setting deadlines for yourself when you're just in the exploration stage. So I kind of want to see now, like, how the cup can contrast the bag. So you kind of don't want it to have the same um, visual vernacular, per se. So let's say I have a black bag. Maybe I go with a pink cup, mm -hmm. or maybe I go with a tan cup. So not everything has to be apples to apples. Right. So through this, you're you know you're finding your visual opportunities and creating a more robust system. And it's also going back to what you are talking about when you're building these explorations, like mm -hmm. having this push and pull yeah. of color, like this in itself is its own composition, just these different touch yeah. points. Yeah, so in the bags you can kind of see, so you know, I'm playing around with how big the type is. Is it super large? Mm -hmm. Does it get smaller? And then playing around with the chicken. That darn chicken. That darn chicken. <laughs> So, you know, maybe bringing in another pattern. Yeah, Sorry. that's what I was thinking. Like yeah, so like, like something heavy. more granular. Okay, why does it keep doing that? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see if this will work. There you go. Um, cool. So it kind of brought this, kind of reminded me of like grill marks or something. Yeah. Um, so I, I was finding that a lot of, a lot of my elements were really heavy, mm -hmm. so I feel like I needed something lighter to contrast that. Gotcha. And how are mm -hmm. you feeling right now? You feel like it's pretty fleshed out, or you're still very much just uh, throwing at the wall? I'm still throwing it against the wall and mm -hmm. seeing what sticks. Um, so we'll see. Maybe once Aaron has his pattern, we'll see how that comes into play with each other. 45 talking? seconds away from having a pattern. Timeline. <laughs> 45, 43, and, and 44. <laughs> Cannot count. Cool. Um, we like to set um, time constraints. Uh, it's really important. I think time management is, is really important. I, I remember um, it's, it's kind of hard to, like right now I'm sort of trying to design and talk, which sort of it's, it disrupts it, uh, sort of your train of thought. But when you're designing, um, when I was working out of my home office, I, I kind of could work till burn the midnight oil. I could mm -hmm. work till two or three in the morning. And I would just keep yeah. working and working. And as I got older, it's like I, I, I need more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I put a lot more value in it. It's like time management is so important. And so you look at deadlines, it's like, okay, it's due by the end of the week. I have to do X amount of concepts. Mm -hmm. And so how do I sort of block and bracket my time to be able to get to, so I sort of reverse engineer the time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. back it out. And so like, I need to be able to accomplish this by such a date. Mm -hmm. I need to have X amount of logos within this certain time window. In order to do that, you have to manage your time. And so mm -hmm. we, I encourage all the designers to set time constraints. So if you're working on something, say, okay, I'm gonna do this in two hours. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. what that does is puts parameters and you start to, you focus on things as opposed to if you don't put those time constraints, sometimes you can just kind of spin your wheels a lot and yes. you can kind of meander and, and waffle a little too much and that two hours turns into six to eight to ten. Oh yeah, that's me. And <laughs> and what I and what I discovered when I was I, I get to like the 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 eleventh hour and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I'm supposed to design six logos for a client. I only have five mm -hmm. And I have one hour left before I have to email it to the client. Right. So I will jam on that sixth one. Mm -hmm. And what I found is 
oftentimes that sixth one was the one they liked. Oh yeah, high octane. Oh, right? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, why did I spend so much time on these other ones? I put, I was so precious to me and I, I wanted, I wanted to make it so perfect. It's like when you're sort of put those time constraints, you force yourself to be a really high level critical thinker and you make quick decisions. Yep. And sometimes those simple quick decisions, um, you find the solution there. So I, I stopped doing like just trying to make everything so precious. Yeah. And sort of putting time constraints on it allows you to, or kind of forces you to be um, very critical and make quick decisions. Yeah. So it's about decision making mm -hmm. and problem solving. That's really cool. I'm actually working on a project right now that I feel like I have too much time, so I'm just like, la di da. So maybe I'll work <laughs> right. on some time constraints. Like, I have two hours. You're yes. on Adobe Live now. End of day. Got to do this. Okay, so mm -hmm. I, I started this pattern. I was kind of looking at it in like, I want to kind of block it so I can step and repeat it. And so I, I intend to put a little more brand voice in here, more words like, you know, over and out, Roger, that sort of, you know, some, some fun, whimsical oh, copy. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, but so I have this pattern. I'm going to. I'm gonna group it. So this might go on maybe a cup and it can be like ghosted in the background, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, I call it a wallpaper and pattern, so we'll find a home for it. Um, nice. And so you can kind of step and repeat this sort of stuff. Nice. So that and might be on a food wrap, it could be on the cup. Yeah. Right now everything is, um, you know, a certain color. It serves as some nice visual texture. Right? Yep. Yeah. And Illustrator does have awesome pattern making tools. Chat, if you want to try them out, you can turn patterns mm -hmm. into swatches, apply them to large areas. Very cool. Not saying that there's anything wrong with this. Do you want to try any of this? Do you? <laughs> you want any of this? Yeah, sure. Right? A little pattern there. Um, oh, I thought you were asking me. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, yeah. yeah. Sure, yeah. yes. You know, you, you, we need you to design like the, the little french fry bag okay. or something. Yeah. Beep, boop, beep. Yeah. Um, cool, and once we work on the pattern a little bit, maybe we can look through some of these challenge submissions. Yeah. We can use library. Yes, you can. Are you guys both um, on the Wi-Fi? Uh, yeah, I think okay. so. I'm going to create this pattern. Is that this guy right here? I want to say... No. <laughs> Kathleen, we need, we need your assistance. All right, right what's, here, up? Right? what's going on? So we're, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this pattern mm -hmm. to Christine. Cool. Um, so I want to, do I save it yes. first and then put it in the library? Yeah, that works. Okay, so I'm going to try, I'm going to save it to my desktop and then I'm going to give it to Christine. So if I make edits and she's working on something, it can update on her mm -hmm. computer on the mm -hmm. fly. Right. So I'm going to call it. I think we used it. Wallpaper. Some cloud technology Pattern. happening right now, everyone. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my two mood boards. Let's drop it here. Flip button. And so then I go to library. So. Make sure you're in the one that you want. And I need to drop it in. Is it my library? Pet content? This right. <laughs> Kathleen. Are you both in the same library? I, yeah. Do you have access to the same one? I believe. Oh no, I don't think we are. Let's call. Let's call. Can we label one? So, are you using like the same Creative Cloud? Oh, you know what? Are we on the Creative Cloud? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So maybe, since we don't have any, I can give it a jump drive. You could do it on a jump drive. You could have it for tomorrow. Or you can airdrop it. You can airdrop yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can collaborate with uh, Creative Cloud libraries. You just need to put in the person's email that their Adobe ID is attached to, and you'll get an email that says, "Hey, they want to collaborate with you." Actually, we did that for this stream. Which one is? So it's really, really easy as long as you have it set up in advance of the live stream. Uh, which computer is this? Sorry. It should be Siller. Is it Siller? Yeah, or Paul's MacBook my, Pro. That's my personal. Paul, laptop. okay. It's, um, Paul's. I think it's Adobe. Adobe's? Adobe's. Okay. Oh, okay. It is. Oh, okay. Adobe Mac Pro. You see it? Perfect. Mm -hmm. You just drag and drop. Okay. I'm 
me give this to you. You can play with Someone's it. Someone's gonna get something. <laughs> Someone in this room is gonna get some fun airdropped thing. Yep, got it. Yay! Accept it. Cool. Okay, cool. Easy peasy. Thanks, sis. Paco. Whoa, time is flying. Uh, yes. <laughs> so we're gonna be looking at challenges yeah. as soon as you do this. Yep. And then we'll jump into Dimension real quick. Thanks everyone in chat for helping us. Appreciate it. What's up, Tima? Airdrop for the wins. Are there any other questions? Yeah, there's one. We haven't had any hard questions. <laughs> give us a hard give one. Give us something like. Like what? what's a difficult question, do you think? <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> something like, that requires transparency. Like how do you get clients? How much do you charge for a logo? I don't know. Like some people are like don't want to talk about that sort of stuff. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know. You, what do you guys want to know? <clears throat> maybe th can those go? Um, maybe a light color, tone on tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leslie wants to know how do you turn down a project? How do you turn down a project? Just with N O. You know, I I I say this a lot. Like when. Before we sort of, over the last three or four years, we've had a lot of success. And I think uh, that's by virtue of like I mean, building a team with all these great individuals mm -hmm. um, with where we are today with Farm and as we continue to grow. Uh, but prior to that, uh, I was very hungry. And I would, I would literally take any project that came down the road. So mm -hmm. if someone called, I'd be like, yes, I can do that. Right. So I didn't turn down projects. Because I had bills to pay, um, you know, I had to I had to eat, right? You know, I had rent, mm -hmm. and so. But things have changed. Once you get to a certain level, where you know, can you be more selective? Mm -hmm. I think a big part of sort of vetting out uh, a client is you really want to understand who they are. So early on, to be like, what is the project? That's the conversation. What is the project? Uh, what can I do for you? What sort of colors do you like? What kind of logos? It's like it was all really talking about creative stuff. Now, when I have new clients, um, uh, live clients that I think are, are have a lot of potential, I ask like who they are, um, where they are with their business, mm -hmm. um, what are their plans, and I'm trying to get a sense that they're going to be uh, clients that are going to be fun to work with, yeah, or easy to work with perhaps, mm -hmm. um, um, easy. Uh, in the sense that they're they're not going to be unruly and they're just going to sort of try to dictate everything. Right. Um, I, I'm fine with challenging each other. Um, so I think a lot of it is again asking a lot of questions and trying to, to vet out if they are the right client for you, mm -hmm. and if they're if you're the right vendor for them. It has to be a good relationship. Yeah. It has to be both sides. And so I, I said, do you have any questions for me that I can help sort of um, give you any insight on on helping you make your decision? Mm -hmm. um, I've talked about this before on other channels, but I, I think for for me, um, I, I I call them the um, the the three P's. Is it three or four? And you're like I can't remember uh, no, them no, no. right now. <laughs> it's three. So the three P's are people, profit, and portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I'm vetting out um, potential clients, I, I want to know um, who the people are. Um, the second one is. Uh, profit. I want to sort of negotiate a price, mm -hmm. and the third thing is a portfolio. Is it something that we, we'd be take pride in doing? Something gotcha. we get really excited about mm -hmm. that we can put in our portfolio and beget the next project. So when I weigh those three things out, I have to have at least two of those things working for us mm -hmm. before I select the project. So right. it could be the people are great, um, the project is going to be fun, but then say the profit is not there. That's okay. I yeah. don't need to make money on every project because I know it's going to be a fun experience to work mm -hmm. with them and it's going to be a portfolio piece that's going to get another project. Yeah, that's great. Or any combination, but I have mm -hmm. to have at least two of those. Yeah. One of them does not work. Mm -mm. Um, and if you can have all three, that's the unicorn that we're striving to find. Yeah. Um, and so, and if you don't have it, then you just say, I don't think we're a, a good fit. Yeah. Maybe I can recommend someone that might be better for you. Mm -hmm. um, that's and, a great way to yeah. turn someone down mm -hmm. and yeah. then point them towards something else. Yeah. yeah, nice, cool. So we have just a little bit of time to look at these challenge submissions. Mm -hmm. 
We'll probably spend about five minutes looking at them all. Mm -hmm. So you can see them up on the big screen. That's probably the easiest mm -hmm. way for you to see. Again, they captured a pattern using Adobe Capture and then applied it to some marketing here, which is really cool. Wow. Nice green yeah, and those patterns blue. Are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adobe Capture. And there's even something yeah. like a secondary pattern going on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice job. This one is by Salam. Nice job. Good yeah, great contrast with the micro patterns and the macro. Mm -hmm. I like the, the contrast there. Yeah, so. so it doesn't look like, well, maybe there's a slight pattern. Oh, yeah, there I see is. it. Very tonal. This so is for Brandacity. <laughs> nice logo here. And I wonder, Brandasty, did you use Dimension to mock this up? Let us know. This is by Shaman. This is by Michael. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very earthy. Great mock ups. Mm hmm. Yeah, Michael, what did you use? <laughs> yeah, I like the, the contrast, how he's using different patterns yeah. on them. Mm -hmm. So it's not so cookie cutter, mm -hmm. um, but it certainly looks like a system. Yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. Cool. Nice job, Michael. This one's by Derek. Whoa. You all have such good vibes. Oh. This nice kind of vibrating like blue this on this one. turquoise. Who's this, Derek? This is Derek. I, I even like the reference I on like the top, top, like how it inspired mm -hmm. the yeah. pattern and yes. how he shows how he did that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. insight on, mm -hmm. on his thinking. Yeah, it's already laid out perfectly mm -hmm. for Behance. Yeah. A little lay yeah. flat. Mm -hmm. flat lay made a portfolio the... piece. Right? Boom, Derek. <laughs> this is by Leslie. Great. Cool. I wonder if this. Oh, there's some talent out here. Yeah. Nice job. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Like, used a pattern to oh, make cool. almost a little almost mark. Ease. Mm hmm. Nice job, Leslie. Oh, you used this as the thing to create the pattern. I see. Oh. Really? Uh, never would have thought of that. Yeah. By Esther, one of our winners from yesterday. She's a ringer. Mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> she's a student, doing well. Nice job. And I think oh, we have two more. All right, this is by David. Thread Custom Fabrics. Mm -hmm. Cool, almost look like wood prints or block prints. Good I love how everyone's playing with contrast and solid mm -hmm. and textures mm -hmm. and it's not just Cookie cutter. Yeah. You know, it's just applying the same thing on each each application. No logo it's slap great. here. Yeah, it's wonderful. This is by Liam, who's been asking awesome questions today. Oh, cool. I like the color palette. Oh, pattern created from the farm sketch right here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, kind of little almost quasi polka dot, but with some deeper yeah. pattern going on. Really cool. cool. So I'm gonna um, pick. Yeah, hmm? you definitely should. Yeah. And it's yeah. vector too, so you oh, can bring cool. it into Illustrator and then edit it Choose from the there. Yeah, I'll pick maybe three top okay. options very quickly. So maybe you could answer like a question in chat in like a minute's time. Sure. Okay. If you see any, <laughs> chat ask a question. Exactly. And then and then Christine was applying some oh, yeah. of the the patterns to maybe one of the touch points. Oh, nice. And we'll continue to flush some mm -hmm. of these things out for, for tomorrow, but we'll have a system built out. So um, so we tried one on that's more tonal, since everything has a lot of colors or something that's just mm -hmm. simple. No, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm just reading that. Um, if it's something just simple and honest, so bringing that you know craft paper through. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's one that's a total contrast, which is maybe a pink color uh, with hits of white in the logo make it pop perfect but i think it's you know how is everything like as a system so far totally so sometimes i'll grab you know a bag you know, it's, you and know, put it with these. something else yeah just to kind of see it next to it Cool. And I actually don't know if we have time to answer any questions. Maybe you could grab one of these little artifacts, like yeah. the walkie-talkie logo, mm -hmm. and export it real quick. Sure. You could just right-click on it and export selection, and we'll, you can get dimension opened and pop it on something. Um, and while Christine's doing that, Aaron, do you want to look at these top options? 
for yeah. the challenge. They're all so great in different right. ways. I, I think know. there's so much talent out there. Yeah, so I picked this one because I think this is a really creative use of a reference image. It's not it's not a really patterned thing, although it does have repetitive shapes. Mm -hmm. So nice job here. Good colors, contrasting colors, mm -hmm. shapes. Nice cohesive system, but yeah. yeah. Nice, this one was nice. It was all laid out already. Ready for Behance. Yep. Perfect. I really like that one. Yeah, it even has different like icons. It has just the logo and the logo and the word mark. And then we have this last one, which is very earthy and even integrates this kind of stone texture. Yeah, a little it's stage. On. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's cool too. Yeah. What do you think? Which one really? You know, I think you? they're all great in mm -hmm. various ways, and I think they're. I, I'd be. I would be happy to put any one of those in my portfolio. Yeah. Um, I, I think this one here, the, the ones with the leaf. Yeah. Um, what I like about that is it's telling a story. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like it's a little inside of the, the conceptual thinking of the patterning. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Great use of colors, uh, micro macro, like we you have focus on some of the larger elements, but then they have this flat lay of mm -hmm. all of these sort of, um, uh, with the headphones and the glasses. Yep. Uh, it, it starts to give it some context. Yeah, some life. Uh, a little bit of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's super cool. I that's really like that's my one. pick. Yeah, and you even used the pattern to create kind of yeah. the mark, which is so cool. So nice, nice job, Derek. You are the winner of the challenge for this stream. We have two more streams coming up today, so make sure to keep submitting if you haven't won. Adobe Live will be in contact with you, Derek. So be on the lookout in your uh, Behance messages. All right, Christine. Yeah. So this I, is Adobe Dimension. Yeah. So I opened it up, mm -hmm. and on the side panel, you can kind of choose an object or touch point. Mm -hmm. And we have like three-ish minutes. Yeah. So I so mean, you can boogie also, through this. <laughs> so you can like drag and drop what color you want. Yeah. Different materials. It can be yeah. shiny, wooden. And we'll probably play with this more tomorrow, but I wanted to give you a little taste. Yeah, yeah we'll be able to take some of the, the artifacts and the designs that we were playing with uh, today, and we'll, we'll continue playing with it and um, mm -hmm. flush it out on some of these bags Ooh. and other touch points. So I don't use this often, but mm -hmm. I was playing around with it yesterday. Right. Very cool. So you can apply a decal to a mm -hmm. side of the object. You can even use the magic wand tool to click and select sides and apply decals. Mm -hmm. And the awesome thing about this is then you can send this to be rendered. You can render it as a very high quality JPEG or PNG, and it comes out as a beautiful lighted um, 3D model that you can then add different models to. You can make a whole scene, a different flat lay. You can download 3D models from Adobe Stock, other places. You can download textures. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and it starts casting the shadows mm -hmm. on the surfaces. Mm -hmm. And then when you have multiple items, then they cast shadows in on it. Each so other. all those little details yeah. is what it was you can, like, really cool. Fix yeah. The surface, mm -hmm. um, an opacity, you want it more tonal. Very nice. So, yeah, this is super rough, but kind of get the point of what totally it starts to do. Mm -hmm. And it helps you know how your yeah. images will actually look in space. You can even add like a background. Mm -hmm. And once that's loaded, you can then click, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's devi define plane, perhaps oh, yeah. match image. Oh, oh which one is it? Oh, <laughs> that's okay. I, so I you'll just click match okay. image over here and it will say, mm, this is a box. This looks like a tabletop. Let's mm -hmm. stick it on there. So just, just click OK. okay. Mm -hmm. It'll take a second, think a little bit. Mm. Boom. Oh, wow. So it's even taken the lighting of this kind of dim yeah. coffee shop. And then you can adjust it further from there. But that's about all the time we have for mm -hmm. today. So thank you so much, Aaron and Christine. Yeah, Hopefully you'll come you. back tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully we can show you a little more tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So tomorrow we'll be kind of focused on wrapping. Mm -hmm this exploration up mm -hmm. and we'll jump into dimension a little more. There'll be a different challenge tomorrow. So make sure you come back for that. But we have another stream following this one uh, just as soon as we jump off. So stick around, get some water <laughs> and come back and enjoy some more graphic design. Yeah. We'll be back soon. Goodbye, right, everyone. See you Bye everyone.